Okay, let's unpack this. We're seeing this really intense cold outbreak across North America. Yeah, the Polar Express, as they're calling it. Exactly. And the source material we've got confirms this isn't just your standard winter cold. It's... Uh, it's aggressive and it's persistent. It has real staying power. So our mission for this deep dive is to figure out why. And the answer, it turns out, isn't at the surface. Yeah. The twist is that this was all triggered by, a, well, a major structural failure miles above us. A full collapse of the Arctic polar vortex. And it was set off by something called a sudden stratospheric warming, or SSW. And to really get that, you have to look way up, right? Like 15 to 50 kilometers yeah, up. Precisely. The polar vortex, the PV, it's actually two different systems. The one we care about here is the stratospheric one, the SPV. Okay. Think of it like a huge atmospheric wall. You know, it, it normally keeps all that frigid Arctic air completely locked up over the pole. So the wall broke. The wall broke. An SSW event doesn't just warm the polar cap. The key thing, and this is the technical definition of a major event, is a catastrophic wind reversal. The winds up there literally start spinning backward hmm. from westerly to easterly. Okay, that sounds pretty complicated. Downward coupling, I see that in the notes here. How does a failure that high up actually lead to the brutal cold we're feeling on the ground? That is the critical question. That's the downward coupling, that chaos high up in the atmosphere, the uh, backward spin, it gets mirrored directly down into the troposphere. So where our weather happens. Exactly where our weather happens. It doesn't just cause a ripple, it forces the polar jet stream into this really amplified, super wavy shape. We call it a meridional flow. And that wavy path is basically the open door for the cold. It's the open highway, it's the polar express track, and it lets all that locked up Arctic air just surge south right over the eastern two-thirds of the continent. Which means we're seeing these immediate, really extreme hazards. Yep. The speed of it is what's so stunning. Mm. The sources point to Western Canada. Calgary is looking at a temperature drop of more than 30 degrees Celsius in a single day. Yeah. I mean, that's not a cold snap. That's a public safety emergency. And we have to talk about the wind chill, the physiological danger. We absolutely do. In the upper Midwest, the feels like temperatures are going to be approaching minus 20 Fahrenheit. And you need to know, when wind chills get near minus 25, you have about a 15 minute window before exposed skin can get frostbite. 15 minutes. That's critical information. So we've got the physical danger, but this pattern is also uh, stress testing all the systems we rely on. Right, the invisible systems, the sources point straight to the energy risk. You're talking about NERC, the North American Electric Reliability Corporation. That's the one. They've already issued assessments. They're acknowledging an elevated risk of, well, not having enough energy supply. It's because of synchronous demand. Everyone turning up the heat at the same time across huge regions. And we're seeing the reaction in the market already. U.S. natural gas prices at Henry Hub are at a three-year high over $5 per MMB2. And it's that dual demand paradox that's really driving it. You have this massive spike in domestic heating. While at the same time, LNG liquefied natural gas exports are still rising. Exactly. So the system is being squeezed from both ends. Huge demand at home and huge commitments abroad. It's a major strain. And there's this hidden danger too, right? Civil infrastructure. Yes. The rapid freeze-thaw cycles that come with a wavy jet stream put enormous strain on things like water mains. When they break, you get floods, which leads to deadly road ice, or even, in the worst cases, sinkholes. So if we tie this all together, the vortex collapse kicked this whole thing off. It established the regime, yeah. But there are background factors that are helping it stick around. Like what? Well, we're in a transition from a weak La Nina, and there's something called the quasi-biennial oscillation, the QBO. It's in a descending easterly phase, which, to put it simply, helps lock this cold, wavy pattern in place. That's why this could dominate well into the first quarter of 2026. So the final thought here for you, the person looking at their heating bill, is to think beyond just this week's forecast. What this deep dive really shows is that with the huge strain on our domestic gas supply happening at the exact same time as we're increasing LNG exports, the real question is about the resilience of our entire energy system for the rest of this winter. That dual demand isn't going away.